Director Shoko? Here. Director Alavado? Here. Director Bates? Here. Director Carruth? Here. Director Chun? Here. Director Evers? Director Hack? Here. Uh, Director Martinez? Director Ming? Director Monaghan? Here. Director Bearden? Here. Director Shea? Yes. Director Spitzer? Here. <coughs> you have a quorum. Thank you. Public comments. At this time, members of the public may address the Board of Directors regarding any item within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Board of Directors. But no action may be taken on off agenda items unless authorized by law. Comments shall be limited to three minutes per person and 20 minutes for all uh, minutes for all comments unless the chairman, subject to the approval of the board, sets different time limits. Do we have any requests for public comments? No, we don't. Thank you. A special presentation, uh, Mr. Gallagher. Oh. <laughs> I have the wrong, wrong scorecard this morning, I'm sorry. Um, actually, um, I'm going to ask Joyce Hill, our Deputy Director of Customer Service, to come up and, and uh, introduce our uh, customer uh, of the month for you. Thank you. Good morning. As most of you know, we have currently almost 450,000 Fast Track accounts. And of those four, 450,000, about 4,000 of them are commercial accounts. Um, we have our staff member, Herbert Perez, downstairs that works closely with the top uh, or the highest volume of those commercial account holders to ensure that the accounts are kept up to date to avoid violations and to make um, for smooth driving on our roads and usage of our roads. O'Connell Landscape uh, currently has 81 active transponders and spends about $2,200 a month in tolls, mostly on Foothill Eastern, but they do also drive uh, Cat View once in a while. So um, their fleet and safety manager, Michael Becerra, is um, kind enough to join us this morning, and I'd like to introduce him so he can just kind of give a few comments about his um, experience on our toll roads. Good morning, and thank you, uh, Joyce, for uh, inviting me here and uh, letting, uh, allowing me to actually represent our company, O'Connell Landscape Maintenance. As you know, we're a landscape company, and uh, we're always on the road, always on the move, and a fleet and safety manager. My job is to make sure that the fleet's uh, vehicles are well kept and maintained so that we can get our, our employees to and from the, uh, the job destinations, from the work uh, the satellite yards and such. Uh, and one of the um, items that we uh, really uh, look at is our, how much we spend on, on fuel and economy and trying to get to and from our destinations in the, uh, the shortest, uh, I think of the shortest trip there and to get back in time. So um, by using the, uh, what we call the fast track, using the fast track transponders, we're able to use the uh, transportation corridor agencies uh, roads out there, the toll roads, mainly the 241 which assists us in getting to and from our location, which is in Ranch San Margarita, all the way down to places like uh, Anaheim and into uh, further deeper into the Orange, the city of Orange, and those locations and back out to the Riverside area. Uh, so um, our, our big, uh, one of our biggest uh, fears is misuse and abuse of our, um, our transponders. But because of the agency and the way they, uh, they uh, track the uh, transponders and they're able to contact me with the, the help of uh, Irma Perez, who's the, uh, the representative that I speak to the most. Uh, I'm able to keep control of that, uh, which keeps our expenses down as much as possible and make sure that we're not abusing those actual uh, uh, fast track transponders. So um, I really appreciate the help and, that we get from the agency itself and the uh, correspondence and uh, we're able to keep on track of that. Hopefully our payments are getting here on time, and uh, we're not falling behind. So like everybody else, we all like to pay our bills on time. So uh, thank you again for having me here. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, and allow me to represent our company. Thank policy. you for being a great customer of the toll road. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
we'll move on to the consent calendar, which today are items one through four. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered routine and will be enacted by one vote. There will be no discussion of these items unless board members request specific items to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Do we have any directors that would like to remove any of the items from the consent calendar? All right, we have four, number four. Anything else? New items one through three. I'd like to note under agenda item number three, the recommendation number three, I'm going to abstain uh, in uh, the exercise of uh, precaution because I didn't complete screening and I have a potential conflict. So please note that for the record. All right. I may have a potential conflict. So uh, we've had uh, a motion to move and I assume that motion would contain um, items one through three, noting the extension on element three of item three of yeah, director basis. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Second. All right. We have a mo motion and a second. Any further comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Then we will go to item number four. Director Spitzer. Or do we have a staff report? Uh, probably not prepared for this. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Colleagues, uh, some time back, and I've, my memory's a little faded on this, I don't know when we first raised this issue, but it was, um, I propose that we talk about um, the San Joaquin, given its build out, um, and where we stand with the future of the San Joaquin, whether we need to exist as an independent uh, entity, should we merge with the Foothill Eastern, should, you know, what, what if any of our options? Uh, because we collect tolls and we pay debt. And other than that, I mean, it appears, at least on the face, that most of our uh, roles and responsibilities is fairly de minimis in contrast to the Foothill Eastern. So there seemed to be some reception to that, and as a result of that, I believe there's the recommendation in this particular item to engage a consultant to facilitate those discussions. And so I want to thank the chair for um, being receptive to that. And um, you know, I think that's really important to, to form the dialogue. So playing a little bit of catch up, I know like you and I, uh, like all of us, this is a very busy season, plus the workload does not seem to be cutting down. So I, I did not ahead of time get a copy of the contract of this proposed consultant, but I, I did get it this morning and I had it passed out because I, it's, there's interesting information that's not contained in the staff report. Um, if you look at the last page, the expenses, I'll get to that in a minute, but I didn't know that Doug Carter, and I don't know who he is. I, if I've met him, I apologize, because I don't know. Is he, is he here today, Ms. Eric? He is not. He would be here today, because he's from Virginia. So, if you'll look at, you know, the contract proposal is 95 grand with 15,000 in travel. I have to tell you, um, we recently hired a facilitator at the Orange County Fire Authority and they're, the firm is from San Luis Obispo, and, and I've received a lot of criticism because we didn't go out for RFP. Plus, we went with we went out of we went out of county, and this is not only out of county; this is out of state. So, my understanding, Mr. Carter has an existing contract, but that's not a reason to hire a person. First of all, I believe very very strongly that for the purposes of what we're trying to accomplish here, we have a tremendous amount of talent local. We've got people who know our roads, they know the personalities of the directors, they know what the issues are, they work with other transportation agencies. And so I need to understand why if there's such a compelling reason to hire somebody that I don't know or I'm, I would suffice. I know, Mr. Chairman, I, my understanding is from staff where you met with him. So you might be able to enlighten us, I'm sure you can on that. I mean, he might be the best guy in the whole world for this, but I doubt it. Because I know there's a lot of talented people here locally. So, the question is, is why would, and that's, that's issue number one. Issue number two is the scope of work. So the scope of work is somehow, is somewhat delineated in the staff report, but it's really articulated in page two of his proposed scope of work. He thinks this will take 400 hours, which is mind boggling to me. That's two and a half months of full-time work. Like right? the question presented, I think is, 
do we need to exist as a separate standalone entity? It's not, I don't need to know about the visioning and why we exist and what our reputation is in the community. That's not why I put this idea forward. It was really an organizational efficiency and uh, dealing with some of the legal issues that we might have with respect to state law and options we can have with um, our covenants with the and then the indenture representations of the bondholders. You know, all that needs to be explained to us. But this scope of work is so broad. So I guess it would be helpful, Mr. Chairman, first and foremost, before you even get into whether this is the right guy. What what do you because we haven't had a lot of public discussions or board discussions about it since it first came up. What do you, what do you think the scope of work is? And because I think the scope of work will dictate, right, how big this contract is. And I don't think we as a board have really discussed what the scope of work should be. So that's where I'd, I'd like to at least start some brief discussion about what is the scope of work. And then I'd like to entertain a discussion of do I really need to bring somebody in from Virginia to do this? Well, let me start with a little bit of response. And, um, uh, and then uh, I believe our vice chairman uh, would that meeting as well. Um, but to begin with, the contract, as I understand it, is a not to exceed contract. So if it takes four hours instead of 400 hours, we would be billed for four hours. And, um, uh, and in part, um, setting the, the outlining scope of where this goes will be a task of this committee. And you raise the issue in a very narrow sense. Um, I personally believe that if we're going to take on this task, we don't take on the task in the narrow sense, we take on the task in the broad sense. Why are we here? Not should we specifically merge with OCCA or merge with Foothill Eastern or that type of thing, but why are we here? That's a different question. And, uh, and I think there are lots of reasons to establish why we are here and why we are an entrepreneurial agency, not a... Uh, a grinding agency. And and so within that, uh, the scope of work has been set as a broad scope. Uh, as the group gets together and begins to discuss this, uh, the scope may change. Um, but uh, at least, in, in all honesty, in my belief at this point in time, your narrowness is of a minority of opinion on the board. And so we set the scope broad, <coughs> and if the committee, in fact, begins to say that no, we really should focus this down more narrowly, then we have that opportunity to do it. But um, if we start with that narrowness, and then we have no other choice but to focus on that. Okay, that, that, that's, a, that's a reasonable explanation. I don't, I don't really have a problem with that in funnel. I mean, I, I think you do start broad and you narrow it and you see where it goes. Um, what about why, why a Virginia consultant when we have so much local talent? Well, I'll let uh, our CEO chime in on that, but, but I will say that, that in meeting with him, um, he is extremely impressive. He understands uh, the issues of mobility. He has done this for several agencies. Um, and, um, and one comment you made is that, you know, we, have, we do. We have local people here that know us as individuals and, and we know our agency and all that type of thing. I'm not sure that's good. I'm not sure that's good. And, uh, and this is a person that comes in and he knows the mission. He knows the process. And boy, <coughs> of the personalities, we might find some directions and some thoughts that, uh, that are pulled out of this that otherwise would not arrive. So, but I would like our CEO to make a comment if you would. Well, just to add to that, uh, you know, he's had experience. Yeah, with tenure. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, so we get that. I've never seen something like that before. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, could you, uh, it's pointing at me. Could you turn it just a little? Uh, just a little. Okay. Uh, just to add to that, uh, I've known Mr. Carter for years. Uh, he has um, he worked with Booz Allen for probably 25 years, I'm guessing, um, and he's on his own now. So we're getting him at a very uh, reasonable rate. Um, he's outstanding. Uh, he has done a lot of work for OCTA. He's done a lot of work for LA Metro. He understands the area, the agencies. 
Um, and then we've used them over the last several months to do what I call a SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and uh, threats. So he has now a very good understanding and has been working with our staff on sort of where we are. And so I think he's frankly perfect for uh, this. He gives the independence that the chairman mentioned. Um, he's got years of experience in the field. I mean, we'd be lucky to get him, frankly. Um, and then he has an understanding of the agency for the work he's been doing. And so this technically is an amendment to an existing contract we have to bring us on. Yeah. Can I ask a question? You may. Okay. So you worked at Booz Allen, right? Right. And you're still within your one year since you left Booz Allen, right? No, no, I've been gone for Booz Allen. Um, I worked with CH2 and Hill for two years after oh. I left Booz Allen. Okay. How long has he been gone from Booz Allen? <coughs> I guess a year and a half, something like that. Um, I don't know, you know, I mean, I, I'm glad we're betting this, really, because, you know, these are the kinds of things I, first of all, I had no idea, right, the scope, um, you know, the staff report um, was good, but it didn't, you know, I always like to know what the charges are, the hourly rate, things like that. Um, listen, I just want to have the discussion, so I'm not so wedded to who, what, when, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't want to waste money on something bringing somebody all the way across the country unless there's a compelling reason to do that. These are very persuasive, I mean, those are persuasive arguments. I, I give a lot of deference to chairs and vice chairs in our leadership because you all have to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, and I'm extremely deferential to your opinion. Um, you know, so if you, if, you know, given what Neil said and given what you said, you seem to be very impressive. You too, Scott. Yeah. Um, I'm willing to support it, give it a try, because I, I want to have the discussion. And I'm just glad, I have to honestly say, you know, that it's quite, it's, for 95,000, we'll see how it goes, but, well, it's, I'm not, it's not the Santa Ana perspective that I'm so concerned about here, but, um, what you guys are doing in Santa Ana, but, um, uh, but anyway, long story short, I was trying to be helpful here. So, um, so I'm willing to support it. I'm glad we have this discussion. Um, what is the status, Mr. Chairman? You, so there is, there's a, an ad hoc committee, right? Have you made those appointments? Uh, I have. Okay. And who's on that committee? I'm sorry you asked. You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I made the appointment, though. Okay. And I do know that you're on that committee. Oh, I am on the you committee? You are on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> well, is every, my question I thought really it was easier to go over it once instead of twice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe four times, right? <laughs> That's not why I asked the question. What I want to know is are all the individuals who you've asked and who have agreed to serve, are they all committed to the time that it's going to take to do this? Like, have we gotten that feedback? Because I want to make sure that we're going to engage it. This scope is much broader than I thought. I completely appreciate the contrast that you think my perspective is more narrow. Um, but I'm completely open into starting why, because I think that's a more efficient way to go about it anyway. Um, so all that being said, I'll move the recommended actions. Um, but just the answer of all the directors who you asked to serve, are they all are they all corroborated that they're my memory engaged? we have uh, uh director John Gordy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were part of Caltra. <laughs> <laughs> you could take a pay cut. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone remember the appointments could we ask the clerk to pull them out. As long as you can, as long as everybody. The discussion has been held with the individuals, yeah. and they're all very, That's and they were all very excited about going on the committee. <clears throat> and we decided not to kick it off, also for the very reason you said. Everybody is so busy at this time of the year. Yeah. If Christmas only came earlier, we wouldn't have a problem. But, uh, <laughs> sure. uh, so, yes, would you please? Um, yourself, uh, Scott Schultz, Director's Base, Colorado, John. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, 
I've, I've been through a lot of strategic planning processes, the SWOT analysis, and I can't even tell you how many times with various organizations, nonprofits, uh, big entities, small entities. Um, <coughs> In my experience, uh, it's usually quite productive in a one day or two day session. You come in in the morning, you decide what you're gonna do, you put all the little things up on the top board, you, you list down your, your SWOT analysis, but by, by the end of the, of the two day retreat, you've got a pretty good idea of where your organization needs to go, and then you refine that every couple of years or every year you go back and look at it again. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty standardized process. It, in my experience, it has not been a $100,000 process, and uh, I'm, I'm concerned with the scope uh, for two reasons. One, just because of the sheer size of the contract, I'd like to see um, some stopping points along the way to say, okay, let's do the initial process and then spend the first $30,000 and decide if we're on the right path or if it's worth continuing. So um, even if we did this whole thing, I'd like to see some break points in it. <coughs> but the other thing that I'm concerned about is that one of the big purposes of a SWOT analysis, at least when I've done them before, is to get buy-in from all the people who are part of it. You want everybody participating and owning a piece of that conclusion so that by the end of the day, everyone agrees with the conclusion. And I'm a little concerned that we have an ad hoc committee. I know I'm on the committee, but I'm a little concerned that we're going to have an ad hoc committee that's going to go work with somebody outside of this board, spend $100,000 of his time developing something, and then come back to the board and say, here you go. Um, and uh, I'm, just, I'm concerned that we're going to end up not on the same path that the rest of the board is on. Either that or having gone so far without buy-in from other people that you're going to end up with a product that isn't necessarily a buy-in from everyone. Um, and that has to do with the ad hoc structure. I understand that uh, it's harder or less practical to do a, a SWOT analysis kind of a discussion with a big group, um, but, uh, but I'm concerned about ending up with a product that isn't bought off by everybody. And, and plus, you know, we're talking about two boards here. So this is our board. And I would not be surprised if what comes out of this process is going to require some buy-in by the other board as well. And I just, I'm, I'm, that's why I think it would be smarter to take smaller chunks of this contract at a time uh, and then vet that what we come up with so far and with where we're going and then take another bite of it and then take another bite of it as we go along. And I, I, that's my, my initial thoughts. But I like the idea of going through the process, just concerned about um, the, the size of the bite we're taking right now and the, and the end result of what we're well, to begin with, we have the authority to stop the process and have what to. This is not a this is not a fixed fee contract. Mm -hmm. It's by the hour. Yeah, yeah I just want to add, uh, we plan to operate it just the way you just talked about. In other words, it's a hey, would you do it? Well, it'd be a front. The second point is, um, and I used to. This is the thing what I used to do for a living. Yeah, and I did it most recently for the Wilmot the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority Board. And I couldn't agree with your comments more about process and buy-in. So the, the trick here is you've got an ad hoc committee, which is only a subset of the board. And the, one of the things they're going to have to deal with right off the bat is how do you bring in the whole board into this? And that'll be one of the key issues going forward. And that's that's a critical part of the facilitation process. So, I mean, I think your comments are right on. They're just they're great um, things for us to focus on as we get together and start to move down the the path of this strategic planning process. Okay, Director Over. Uh, yeah, a couple of comments. First of all, I think it's been an excellent discussion. Um, yeah, that's better. Um, and, and I agree with you, Robert, in terms of, of uh, taking it slow and the buy-in thing is so important. You're going to need some meetings in between with the full boards to just get them up to date, make sure they're up to date. But the main reason I, I wanted to comment was on Todd's point, and, and I would agree because of the circumstances and because this individual already has the background and the knowledge of what we're doing, that he's probably the right individual and that we should move forward with it. But I just think as a general policy or general thought that uh, to staff is when we do bring consultants in for jobs that we should try to emphasize the importance of them being local or, or at least in California. Um, so I think that was an excellent point. Uh, um, thank you, Todd, for pulling this. The first thing I want to ask, though, is that this contract that we had to ask for, I would really like these things included in the um, agenda report. Um, that, that would be a really good thing. Okay, secondly, um, I agree with Director Ming's comments, and thank you, Neil. I mean, one of the reasons why we hired you was because of your background, your diverse background and the fact that you have expertise in this area. So 
Um, I am going to defer to your expertise that whether, you know, how much you know this gentleman and you work with them and all of that, I, I appreciate that. And I agree that with, I, I think it might be a good thing with the, once we get through the SWAT, or, and I'm not on the ad hoc and I'm not asking to be, just so you all know. Um, I don't like to do those things, but I'm appreciative of the work that goes into them because I've done them like Robert has said and they can be grueling. Um, but I would like maybe that would be the first phase that we look at, that we come back to the board with the SWAT and just say, this is where we're going, do you have anything else? That might be the first, first part of that. Um, and um, I do think it, we have to justify $15,000 in travel. So I, I will support this, Neil, because you're recommending that we do. Um, but I think that we need to be a lot more cognizant of that expenditure. The other issue that came up was um, that this gentleman, um, this consultant, has a lot of knowledge. What he doesn't have knowledge of is what we have knowledge of, and that is our local, what's going on locally. Um, that can be a constraint, um, but it also has to be part of the process. So my expectation is the members of the board of the ad hoc committee will bring that to the table and say, "This is what we're dealing with in Southern California, i.e., uh, Orange County." So I that's it. Thank you, Director Shea. I think I made the comment. Thank you, Director Alvaro. Um, you know. Um, Several years ago, probably five or six, and I think Bert was there, and probably Pat, myself, and maybe Melody. Uh, we looked at consolidation of the two boards. I know this isn't on the agenda, but it was brought up. Um, and I was in favor of trying it, and there were some very significant issues that came up that prevented that merger. And I think looking at the staff out there that are new, the board members that are up here are new, we need to. <coughs> briefing of, of these new board members and the historical perspective of why that did not occur. So I think that would be very informative. So whether it's in the form of individual briefings of board members or as an item on the agenda of, of a future meeting, I believe it's very important that that historical data be brought forward because um, I can't remember all the issues, but they were significant that prevented the two boards from merging and that idea keeps coming up and I'm in favor of it but there's some definite reasons that that did not occur it was uh, significant reasons you know, and I look at staff there's a few that are nodding their heads yes but I, I would venture to say it's been five years ago uh, memories are kind of fading so I'd make that uh, suggestion for either individual briefings or as a uh, an item thank you um, I have a question regarding the current contract. Am I reading this right, um, Mr. P Peterson? <coughs> Do we have a current contract with him, and what is the amount of that? I think it's around twenty-five thousand. And uh, I'm unfamiliar to specifically what he's providing. Is it directly to you, or uh, is it consulting to one of our committees? No, it's to me, and it's providing the SWOT. He did an initial SWOT analysis for. Okay. So, and this is now an up to 95, and we have that 25. Well, to respond to you, Christina, I'm on the committee to ensure we don't go over 400 hours because we have a few uh, chatty folks so. <laughs> <laughs> that could. <laughs> yes. I kind of recognize that when, when the names were read. I, I had to say that. that nothing to do with Tom and Robert, of course. <laughs> I have to say that, you guys, because women are always accused of being the ones who get into the details and all of that. And I think you guys all know me. I, I'm not uh, the most chatty Kathy around, so uh, I will be mindful that uh, we keep uh, certainly in the not to exceed and certainly on the hours uh, that we spend on uh, some of the things that might not be as relevant uh, to our discussion uh, in the here and now. I was in the legislature at the time we tried the consolidation, and it was so difficult at the time. It got so political, it got all the way up to uh, the California State Legislature, uh, the Assembly in particular, looking for endorsements for consolidation, and <coughs> people were very concerned about that at the time. And it really goes to the role of the 73 addressing um, entitlement development in South Orange County. 
uh, it was the only way to create roads at that time for uh, what was choking uh, us in the, on the arterials and the freeways in South County as new developments were coming on and the toll roads uh, served the purpose of providing mobility at that time. So the representation of 73 is quite critical in terms of the development impact fees that are collected directly from uh, those with entitlements uh, in South County. And two developments will be in the third district and certainly in the fifth district I uh, will bring that back to the fore as we go forward because that's the last major development uh, in Southern California actually is the ranch plan and then some of the developments that are more individual but large in the third district. So I do support this uh, but I think we need to all be very careful that we uh, contain the discussion in the ad hoc to what is very relevant at that time and I'm assuming that the expertise of this individual will keep us focused on that. That and the fact we have a three minute limit on everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is, Pat's got a lot of it down as far as I can see. Uh, the statement that this is going to be very political is the essence of where we were last time and why we failed. So for me to have an outside consultant is probably the best bet. There were too many people with vested interests playing around in this game. The best place to do it is to take it outside and look at it de novo. Uh, we have legal problems here that just won't quit. Uh, basically, you have an IRS ruling, basically, that says, in effect, because of the, the numbers and the people, we have to shift this thing around, so we have to have a no, new approach. Uh, we, so we, we gerrymandered this the first time around. Uh, we have legal obligations with flow to the bondholders uh, who, we, who we made an agreement with. Uh, there are huge numbers of legal issues still to come. I think we have to understand it as a political process. We have to understand it as a legal process. And that's fairly di difficult. Uh, I don't think this is a simple statement. Uh, we, we all were relying basically on the monies that were going to flow possibly from TIFIA. Uh, TIFIA is uh, you know, a, a product that has been talked about increasing in, in, in expenditures, but right now uh, federal government loans and federal government guarantees are probably further away than the close. So I think this is a very sophisticated problem. I think it's very worthwhile. Uh, it's an argument we've had for a long, long time. Uh, truthfully, most of our problems uh, dealt with the Board of Supervisors last time, Todd, if you remember. Uh, so you know we were very, we've been there before. No, you were uh, you were an Spence. You weren't. Well, you were. Come to think of it. No, you were you were off it at the time. It was assembly, I think. The of the whole John Airport you had something to do with yeah, it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you were well to some degree. Yeah. At any rate, at any rate, it's a political process, and, and having someone who is other than a local individual is, as far as I'm concerned, for a, uh, a great plus. Right. May I have a second for the motion? Second, second. Mr. Chair. All right. I'm sorry, but it was, it was 12. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 And the last <laughs> one to speak on this just, item will be just directed. Just brief comment. I, I support the contract <coughs> and, and uh, in particular the structure that's been established. We, a small number is going to be manageable. You've got. Pat's going to be there to make sure people don't talk too long. But the, the, looking at the list of names that were read, so one, it's a diverse group. I feel as though I'll be well represented. And in particular, when comments were made about, you know, persons on the other coast, you know, I think the world of transportation consultants is relatively small. So I have a lot of confidence that this individual will bring about the right perspective and deal with the political questions that are always a problematic for us. Thank you very much. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We will move on to the Chief Executive Officer's report. Yeah. I, I, uh, the only thing I have, Mr. Chair, is that can, can you hear me? No. Can you hear me now? <laughs> the only thing I have, Mr. Chairman, is just to inform the board that your sister agency um, which is going to meet in a few minutes, um, is right in the final stages of a, the refinancing. And um, you might say, well, why would I raise that to this board? But I think it's significant, and knock on wood, if we're successful, which we should know here in the next hour or so, um, it's a significant development uh, in putting that agency on a sounder financial footing. And um, 
Lisa Bartlett has been part of the uh, team that, that uh, has been on the road for the last week and a half on that, and um, it's been a real process and a you know just a tremendous experience in terms of learning what the investment community thinks and wants to know and you know responds to, and so I, I would just. Uh, <coughs> Uh, suggest that you know, keep your eyes on that because I think you know the first question I would have is well uh, you know we, now that we've got that if we get that in place and have a sound of financial footing on that road uh, maybe we ought to retake a look at uh, the way our finances are set up on, on the 73. All right thank you very much any comments on the director's comment? Right. Oh, Rush you said director's comments I just wanted to bring up something and I'll be speaking more about it um, in Foothill Eastern because we have an item on the agenda. But um, I would just like to recommend to my colleagues, it, this is not going to require a vote, but that we re invigorate the Technical Advisory Committee that has been in place for years but has not really been um, very vibrant or I would say even vital to our process. I think it's absolutely essential um, that we get our technical experts to vet all of these things. Probably not the financial stuff, but um, Mike Freeman and I met uh, Paul Bott, um, and they had met um, a Rich Schlesinger, who is our Michigan City engineer, is, um, is I, I value his expertise, and he met with them as part of the TAC, and came up with some really good questions about um, one of the agenda items. But I think it's important that we, as, as members of the board, go back to our cities and make sure that our um, city engineer, our technical people are willing to um, become more involved in the TAC and that, that that just becomes part of the agenda process. That the questions they ask are in the agenda report and that we know um, as representatives of our communities that every, every contract, every technical project has been vetted appropriately. I've talked to Neil about this. I've left him an email. So both board chairs, so no one's surprised about this. But And I think that it's better. I have a, um, a principle that, as best as possible, I notify staff ahead of time. Before I ask them questions in public, I ask them um, uh, before we get to the meeting just to have them be aware. And um, I, don't, I don't like to be broadsided myself. I don't like those kind of surprises. So I treat them the way that I would like to be treated, and I think that that's the best rule of thumb that we can offer. So I would just ask my colleagues to just um, reinvigorate the technical advisory committee for um, both um, the 73 and the 241. Thank you for those comments. Any other comments, Director? May I have one more, one more thing? You'll hear from Jim Gallagher in a minute, but I want to just bring home for this board the performance of this road year to date. Um, is fantastic. For the first time, we've got revenues on this road equaling the revenues on the 241. And revenues this year, year to date, compared to the same period of time year to date last year, are up 15%. 16%. 16%. And that's in the face of a 4.5% average toll increase. So it's really, uh, I think it speaks to. Um, Number one, what's happening with the economy, and then number two, the role that we can play in the regional strategy to reduce congestion. Because every one of those riders on our road is somebody that's not on the 405 or the five. So it's, it's really quite a good message. Mr. Chair, can I just follow up with that quickly? Yes, uh, Neil, can you just give us a little update of how, I mean, it's very significant that it's almost 16%. What do you attribute that to? Do you have a general idea? Well, I'd like to say it. Of course, you just with Mike on. coming on board. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the same thing about myself. <laughs> I remember that just that's, that's energized the whole... <laughs> <laughs> Seven and a half percent of fees. Is an old saying. Yeah. Is an old saying. You might want to replace some of you up here. Is an old saying in politics that you're going to get uh, um, held for things you had nothing to do with. So go ahead and take credit for things you had nothing to do with, right? <laughs> but I think I think the honest answer is uh, it's a reflection on what's happening in the economy in Orange County and the surrounding area. I mean, we're having a tremendous rebound. Uh, Steve Abbott is here, I believe. Steve, you here? Yeah. 
Um, do you want to spend a second? Uh, sure. Uh, wait till you hear what's happening. Um, it's, and this is the exact same question we got on the roadshow, so it's a, it's a wonderful. Uh, <coughs> can you just give a quick on that? Steve is with Stantec and has been our traffic and revenue consultant for years. He's also the uh, traffic and revenue consultant for OCTA and for Riverside County Transportation Commission. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm a little unprepared, but uh, I can talk a little bit about what we've uh, or we. <laughs> um, a lot of the key themes uh, Neil's really, really uh, addressed already. Uh, the, the rebounding economy in Orange County has, has uh, happened a lot faster than we originally projected. Uh, looking at kind of our short-term growth ex expectations for both employment and housing, uh, over the last year we've outpaced those. Uh, we've projected about one and a half percent employment growth. We're up over two percent in the in Orange County. Uh, unemployment has been falling faster than projected. I think it's down in the low fives in Orange County. So there's been a, a general rebounding um, in the economy that's been a main driver. In addition to that, uh, or as, as a result of that, what you're seeing is increased congestion on a lot of the toll-free alternatives. Uh, if you look at traffic on I-5 and on the I-405, uh, after being flat or slightly down for a period of anywhere from three to five years during the recession and, and post-recessionary conditions, we're seeing traffic growth of one, two percent uh, on those facilities. So as, as congestion is starting to increase on the toll-free alternatives, the travel time savings on the San Joaquin continues to increase. So it's, it's bringing a, a, you know, it's becoming more attractive as far as the time savings offered on the facility. You want to mention housing? Uh, yeah, in addition, I mean, we're seeing a, a, a dramatic return to housing values. Um, it, it, you know, Southern California was obviously impacted uh, pretty severely during the uh, housing bubble burst and during the recession. Uh, but if you look at, you know, how housing values have, have rebounded over the last couple of years, uh, it, it's, you're seeing a dramatic return um, in those housing values. So there's a lot, people have a lot more equity in, in the homes that exist. And in addition, a lot of housing development uh, has begun. Uh, in the area, we're seeing a lot of you know shovels in the ground projects that are uh, progressing faster than ex uh, anticipated. And in addition to the supply increasing, it seems like the demand's coming right with it, where uh, all the new housing that's being constructed is is being filled almost instantaneously. So, you know, in general, just a, an overall strengthening both of you know housing and employment, which are the biggest drivers of travel in the region. Very good. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see no other uh, desires to comment. I have no report, and so at this point in time, we are going to invite the uh, Foothill Eastern Board to come up and join us and move into the joint presentation portion of the agenda. 